My trip to Morocco is over, but it's one I will never forget. Let's start by saying I never thought before the Qatar World Cup thought I'd generate a relationship with one country like this, and it's one of the best stories I've ever made through YouTube. So for one final time, leave a like to support me and the channel whilst I run you through everything we did on my first trip to this unique nation. And the trip was planned out by Visit Morocco and made my dream come true, so all the credit goes to them. I'm going to leave their links in the description. Thus, as January turned February, I flew from London to a spot in North Maghrib called Tonjia. I got the support from backing the nation as they succeeded through the rounds of the FIFA World Cup. Let's not forget that game against Spain. Portugal, even earlier in the fixtures, they just constantly won and they gained this momentum and you could feel inside the stadiums that they had more fans than any other country, maybe apart from Argentina, but they were more supportive and I just loved the vibes and I made it my wish on my final video when they lost to Croatia, I said I will go to Morocco. Morocco fans, I will see you when I travel to your country. So people wondered if I was ever going to do it, but here I am making it happen. And of course, I was a bit worried. I noticed it's so easy to get here from Europe, visa free. And as I walked off that plane, the weather had got drastically better. <laughs> it's not hard to beat England in that sense. And we went straight to the opening match at the stadium, Batuta, for Al Ali versus Auckland City, a 7pm kickoff. Now this was my first ever match in this country and my first experience inside a stadium for the Club World Cup. And honestly, History will tell you that English people don't really care about this competition, so I was scared people weren't even going to enjoy my videos and I wasn't going to get the recognition for supporting the event. But I'll never forget walking up those stairs to see the bright lights on my horizon, a stunning firework display to welcome this tournament, and I was in shock, in awe, shall I say. They put something together so grand. Just look at my face. After this video went live, Moroccans from all over the world were going crazy and I had stuck to my word and returned to this country. I was being shared on big Instagram pages, newspapers, state-owned Moroccan sites just for visiting this country. It was after this moment that whatever street I went down, I would have a face recognize who I am. And to think that's all from supporting a nation on this YouTube platform is something I can't ever grasp in my head. Al Ali won the game of course and after a sleep at the hotel I had a chance to see the land for the first proper time. We drove to Tetuan and I saw the beautiful landscape land along the way. Morocco is a lot more than what you just think, it's not just desert, it's very green, it's very beautiful, there's mountains, you can see I stopped here just to take it all in and when we eventually got to a new city in the northern part of Morocco called Tetuan, now we went straight into the Medina, a lot of people were starting to know who I was from my first video and I thought it was only right I would purchase a traditional Moroccan garment. And for the rest of the day, I wore it around the city. People loved it. We had a nice lunch. Morocco has this flair about it. And the beauty is every building you go into has such unique patterns on the walls and such grand high ceilings. And that is something I'll never forget. We thought it's only time we go to a new city. So the next day we took the train, the fastest one in Africa, by the way. Tonje to Rabat in one hour, 15 minutes should not be possible. It's one of the best services I've ever seen. So I'm also learning that the transport in this country is more efficient than in England. That's unbelievable, right? So on this new day, I thought the first thing we'd do is check into the hotel, a religious area they rebuilt. And I went with my good friend, Nico Kantar, who also made lots of content in this great country. Then we had a lunch at someone who lives locally and I didn't even know who they were and they invited us in for the most stunning food you'll ever imagine. It consisted of many different meats like lamb and chicken. The couscous had this amazing sauce with it, many vegetables to accompany, just a perfect lunch before going to the football. Moments before arriving at a new stadium, Prince Moulay Abdullah for Widad Casablanca versus Al Halal, February the 4th, 2.30pm kickoff. Nice and early. And this game was absolutely bizarre. You could feel the ground bouncing with a synchronized voice that would take years of practice. That was the winners. A sea of red behind the goal. Our random category two ticket ended up right next to them. I couldn't even tell you my thoughts as most clips you couldn't hear me. The decibel rate must have been through the charts. The moment they broke through and the ball shook the net, the atmosphere took off. The winners were winning. But after the 90th minute, it all changed. A penalty to Al Halal and they converted it. This game was going to extra time. Deathly silence as the ball went in. You could hear a pin drop. Penalties it is. But let's not talk about them. We dad couldn't replicate the form of their national team from the spot. And after one sleep, I woke up to one of the best performing videos I've ever had on my channel. With many comments telling me, you must visit Raja next. And it was only then I woke up to an email from that club asking if I'd like to visit their academy, which is the training setup which they have. We got to watch a friendly that day between Raja and Tonja. Funnily enough, the two cities I'd visited during this trip. We were the only ones inside the academy watching the match. And a pro 
goalkeeper, their second choice, came up to me and even congratulated me on my work, saying thank you for the difference I'm making for his country. Such a special thing to see. We chilled at the beach at Casablanca, had a good sleep before a new day to return up north to Tonja, not by train this time, by car for Flamengo versus Al Hilal, the entry of the Brazilian champs. The winner plays Real Madrid, there's a lot on the line, and you can see that from Flamengo. In Rio, there were high hopes for the club, and it didn't take long to notice that a surprisingly high number had travelled across the Atlantic. My videos at this point were getting picked up more and more, making it hard to go around the stadium without meeting people, which is always great. Inside the ground, we positioned ourselves with the Brazilians and Moroccans who got involved. On the pitch, it was goals galore, until Flamengo got a man sent off, and it blew the game for them, losing 3-2. We went to bed, and after a great sleep, it was time to drive back to Rabat, but not for the football, for the golf. And you know why? Because we got a chance to meet ex-Madrid star and manager Victor Sanchez with Paco Boyo, the goalkeeper who won many La Ligas and played over 300 games for Madrid. He barely understood English, but Victor did and taught us a lot. We actually had lunch with him too. He's a top guy. He's been a manager and now he's in punditry for La Liga TV. And it was the best way to prep ourselves before heading to Prince Moulay Abdallah Stadium for the entry of Real Madrid who face Al Ali in the semi-final. And once again, the fan love was insane. Even through the rails, we got pictures. Shout out to the Madridsters as well for holding up this incredible TIFO, showing the respect between Madrid and the Moroccans. Even with the Egyptian pyro, it wasn't enough to kick on the team to win as Los Blancos asserted their dominance as always. A 4-1 win onto the final. But that allowed us two days to take in this country for one final time before our flight home. So we visited the Mosque Hassan II in Casablanca, the biggest mosque in the country. And by the way, this place stood out. And under it, it had a spa where people go once a week for hammam, which we experienced. The vapor rooms, the massage, they even took skin off us. It was unbelievable. The experience was crazy. And people thought we flew out here for the football, but Royal Golf Dart SLM invited us to play. Me and Joshua gave it a go with Tarek, with a top Moroccan national level coach who knew my channel, which made things easier, of course. But we learned a lot of golf that day. It's motivated me to carry on back in England. I must almost remind everybody that the food in this country is something else. I really appreciated it. On Friday, Friday, it's traditional to have the couscous as well as the hospitality that comes with it top notch and the Moroccan mint tea It's a serious game changer Luckily, we didn't have to go on the road as the final stayed in Rabat and the third place final actually did go to Tonja So Flamengo Al Ali was placed over there the emotions kicked in I realized this is not just the last match of the trip But my final day in this beautiful nation So I made sure anyone who wants a picture they get it anyone who wants a conversation Let's have it the match was special. I met so many great people eight goals all the details is in my video itself on my channel but on a bigger note we complete the challenge the hours of travel was certainly worth it so it's day 11 home time and as I steered my bag through Casablanca Airport I remembered this was all possible thanks to visit Morocco tourism board I've had many comments asking what's the best way to travel to Morocco and it's with these guys all their info is on their website and one final thank you to the great community I have built on this little channel of mine to make trips like this possible and to signify a part of this trip hit the like button it helps me out and a little subscribe would be great for more mad trips next time Casablanca Derby or a new country tell me in the comments from Morocco to London and out good night